Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we're playing the Nightbound from Choices. Today, um, we're going to a we're going to a party now. That's nice. And I and I have this weird bad feeling that near the end of the book, something's gonna happen because it's a Choices story. Of course, something's gonna happen. Let's begin. Immer Immerge sit in a strange world full of magic and intrigue. Will you be able to stay afloat? And that word afloat, what does that mean? Does it mean, are we going to be up in the air? I don't even, I don't even know. Okay, let's. Okay, then. Num Chapter 12 Family Affairs. It's a family affair. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> After a restful night in the Fey colony of Lam Lamrian, you wake up to find Lady Talissa waiting, for waiting at you, waiting at your door. Lady Talissa? Oh! The, the the woman from last chapter, right? A fancy fate ball. I mean, that sounds amazing, but now... But what about the blood wraith, who's still outside? You need to worry about that. The wards around this place have held for centuries. It's for years against even greater foes. We will be safe here until our warriors find a way to destroy that foul thing. Uh... Sunlight? Won't sunlight do? You really think they can defeat the blood wraith? Nothing we've tried has even scratched it. Our champions are second to none. It is only a matter of time before the blood wraith is, is but an unpleasant memory. <laughs> if if it gets killed, and in the meantime, what could be more appropriate than celebrating Anthony, you, Anthony, and your return to us? We are Fey, after all. Revelry is our car. In that case, won't the warriors near help? We're the ones who have been fighting the Blood Wraith, after all. Maybe we can give them some insight or strategies, or which reaches out, putting you in a warm, sweet, peace-scented embrace. Oh, Anthony, it's very sweet of you to offer, but you've earned a respect from fighting, don't you think? The blood rates, rates hurt so many people I love already and couldn't stand I couldn't stand it if something happened to you because of me. We'll all be just fine, darling. I promise you. I have a bad feeling that things will go completely, completely wrong. Just, we'll just wait. Just wait. Perhaps, perhaps a little. What is that ador adorable phrase mortals bandy about retail therapy? Why don't you take a stroll through the market district? I'm sure you could find something lovely to wear for the ball. I would join you, but alas, uh, the colony's leisure's wait, and the ball is just is just in a f is in just a few hours. A few hours? Isn't that a little early? It's already mid-afternoon, love. We thought it'd be best to let you sleep a while. Wait. Mid-afternoon? What? Okay, I'll, you know what? Look, forget it. Well, maybe after the ball we could spend some time together. I'd love the ch chance to get to know my new stepmom. Lady Jalissa shoots you a dimple smile, covering your hands with hers. I would love that. Eric is positively elated to have you in our lives as I am. I just hope Tialo comes around. Pretty sure he's not my biggest fan at the moment. Our sweet boy can be pricky at times, but he means well. He will warm, you, warm to you, you know. He always he's wished for a sibling. Though I suspect he pictured himself as the eldest. I just hope he wants to get 
to know me. I know this is all this is all a lot for both of us. All shall be well. It always is, eventually. Now go enjoy yourself, darling, and I look forward to dancing with you under the stars. Seizing your hands in parting, Lady Talissa sweeps out of, the room, out of your room, leaving the lingering scent of flowers in her wake. As the sun sinks below the crystalline spires, you wander the Fay Market, searching the storefronts for any sign of a dressmaker or tailor's shop. Hmm, I thought I saw one last night when I was out with... Someone knocks into you, and you turn to see Tialo. Oh, great. His face tight with distaste before he school it into a bland courtesy. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, Shell. I didn't mean. I didn't see you there. Tialo pointedly brushes off his embroidered sleeves, looking at you frosty. No harm done. But I admit, I'm rather taken back. Back to see you still about Lamrian, brother. I thought you would already be well on your way along with your exceptional modly crew. But we just only just got here. I've barely had a chance to really talk to, to Elric and Talissa, or you. Contempt flits across his, across his face before he rests himself under control. What in the realms would we have to talk about? I'm a fae duke's son, and you, you're no more than a fouling. This will never be your, your place. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. You reach out warily, place your hand on his skinny shoulder. He twitches in surprise under your touch. I know it must feel like an intrusion, me showing up like this. I'm sorry for throwing you out of the whack. I am not out of whack. Wrong-footed, then. I, I, I won't presume to know how you feel. But this is such an opportunity for both of us. I've never had siblings, and I'd love for us to f be friends, at least. I have plenty, I have plenty of friends already. And if I need more, I'll find some myself. There are many full-blooded fey about, in case it slips your notice. You square off against each other, yellow glaring daggers at you. You let out a heavy sigh crossing your arms. Look, I don't want to impose or take anything away from you. You, As if you could. Everything here is mine by right. But we do share a father, and Lady Talissa is my stepmom now. Which makes us family, whether you like it or not. Exactly. That's where you're mistaken, Anthony. They are my family, my mother and father. I know that. I'm trying. I'm not trying to. Your intentions mean nothing to me. If you, if you're set on staying, I would urge you to reconsider before any harm should befall you. It doesn't have to be this way, though. There is no other way for things to be between us. If you stay here, we'll always find ourselves in, on opposite sides of the chessboard. What if I told you I was more of a checkers person? I would prefer to keep the peace and we'll have none, none if you stay. So please, for both of our sakes, leave now. I can't do that, Tiello. This is where I need to be. If you refuse to see sense, then whatever happens is on your head. Yal turns and storms off, leaving you with a deep, disquiet building in your chest. Oh, I see, I feel like something's gonna happen. Sighing, you wander over the fount over to the fountain and take a seat on its rim, leaving your chin on your hands. That could have gone better. You stand watching the water sparkle around the sculpture figures until a familiar voice sounds voice sounds from close behind you. Penny for your thoughts? You your head snaps up. Okay, that would hurt. 
you see Catherine standing just a few feet away. <coughs> Ugh, I need water. Hi, Catherine. Enjoying the Fay Market? Uh, <coughs> it's better than staying in my room. At least it's bound boundlessly magical in there. It sets my teeth on edge. The beds are ridiculous, right? Like sleeping in a kitten pile. If I didn't need an outfit for this ball, I'd I had stayed there all day. And you and Catherine began walking together down the cobbled streets. Street. After several minutes of silence, Catherine gives you an instinctive look. Everything all right? You look sort of out of sorts. I ran into Tialo on my way here. He tried to send me packing, threatening me more or less. Catherine's eyes narrow. That obnoxious, overindulged little snot. No wonder you're rattled. Honestly, honestly, I'm furious. Your hands grow into fists at your side. Where does he get off talking to me like that? I never did anything to him. Exactly. Fay politics are downright Byzantine. They've elevate power struggles into into an art form. Clits, cabals, ever-shifting alliances, it would almost be impressive if it weren't so tiresome. Bunch of Lannisters, huh? Or Borgias, or oh, Tudors, or z insert any other long-standing death dynasty in history. It's hard to imagine Elric and Talisa are so nice. They might rise above it as as leaders, but I'm sure they play the game when and when they need to. I wouldn't worry about it though. It's not like any of their little schemes can ever come to anything. What do you mean? The wards. They don't just keep enemies out, they also dis they're also designed to neutralize eternal threats. Seriously? How would that work? Gather reaches down and slides a small, wicked curved dagger out of her boot. She flips it around, holding the half out to you. Try to stab me. Are you serious? Your lips curve into a slight grin, her dark eyes glittering. Go on, Anthony. No need to be afraid. It's I'm not. And it's my heart on the line. I'm not doing that. No way, Catherine. I don't care. I don't know how cool the wards are. I'm not risking. Before the words leave your mouth, Catherine flips the knife back around and grips, half plunging the, bl the blade toward her own chest. Catherine! Just before the tip sinks into Catherine's breast home, a bubble of light snaps into being into being around her hand, freezing it in place. See? Not a scratch. I can't believe you did that. I thought I thought you were going to Catherine lets her hand fall to her side and, and the bubble light of light vanishes. But I didn't but I didn't, did I? There was never any real risk. The dagger tucked safely back into Catherine's boot. You resume walking, your blood still electric with adrenaline. How do you do that? Do what? Stay so poised all the time, so cool-headed. You could have just told me how the wards worked. It's almost like you wanted to take that risk. Maybe I did. Here's a living and breathing, breathing the hunt. I suppose it changes a person, steals inside of you, making you cold. So maybe sometimes I walk a little closer up to the edge than I need to. It clears my head. It she breaks off, heaving a small, soft sigh. If it what, it makes me remember what it's like to value my life. Your life is valuable, Catherine. Priceless, actually. 
I wish you didn't have to remind yourself not like that. Anyway, for my sake, if not yours. Gavin gives you a startled look, then nods. I didn't think... I'm sorry, I won't do that again, Anthony. Not if it frightens you. You and Catherine share a lingering look, then continue down the probe and stopping to the pour over the vendor's words. You stop at a spacious pet seller's stall where a metal of adorable creatures roam freely, scrambling over each other. Oh my gosh, look, they don't have. they don't even have cages. I expect their spell to keep. To keep from wandering off, or though even that might not be necessary. What do you mean? The Fae form or very close, almost psychic bonds with their pets. No leash or cage required. That's amazing. Oh wow! Look at this this little one. <coughs> A kitten covered in bright feathers. Scampers across the table, cocking its head at you. Oh, that looks nice. Ooh, oh my god. You hold out your hands, and the feather kitten tumbles happily into them, blinking at you with enormous pale green eyes. It's petted, its petal soft, off warm often warm as a tiny surface snuggling neatly into your cupped palms. They're called Perkins, Perkins. The Fae think they're a touch divine because they're a little soothsavers, but finicky ones. The way I've heard it, if they take if they take to you, they'll share a prophecy. Oh no, this one seems a little more Seems a lot more interested in cuddles than in the future. You could take this little one home, you know. Uh, something tells me this thing would draw a lot of attention. The sign here says that glamours are included with every purchase. You just look, you just look like a normal kitty, hey, wouldn't you? Adopt the parakin to gain a few hints about your future and a whole lot of adorableness. Well, hold on. He's not even standing on anything. I'll take her. Grinning wildly, Catherine scratches the white the white blaze under the perkins. His chin with a knuckle well, until the little creature's eyes eyes begin to slit. You know, I don't think I've ever seen you quite this happy. I may have a soft spot for kitties. Don't tell Ryder. I'll never hear the end of it. Where are you going to name her? Well, a default name. Let's see. Cassie. That's nice. You pay the vendor and walk away from the stall, Cassie snuggling in your arms, showing purely ne needle-like teeth in a wide yawn. <sighs> Getting sleepy, girl? Catherine, maybe we should... You trail off as Cassie fixes herself, fixes her gaze on you, a bright, canny intelligence sparking to life in her eyes. Don't trust the jealous boy. Huh? Wait, well, did the cat just talk? Though his voice is sweet and high-pitched, an icy chill skitters down your spine as you remember Luke's trot of reading on the grim look on his face. Someone else said that to me once. What does that mean? Who's this jealous boy? Where is he? I think we know who the jealous boy is. Close, watching, plotting, angry. Thing. Beware. Cassie blinks once slowly, then, as if coming out of a trance, she shakes herself and swats eagerly at his hair. 
Gathered size stepping out of range and of casts these tiny claws. Something tells me we're not getting any more out of this one. The parrot can can the parrot can, can be tricksters, Anthony. Good as it is, it might not mean anything. Tricksters, right? Gotham shoots you a grim smile, giving your shoulder a comforting squeeze. Come on, you want to get something for the ball, right? I saw a boutique not too far from here. Catherine leads you to a, to a small boutique, boutique at the edge of the mar Fay Market. War warm lamplight sparkles off a luscious fabrics embroidered with gems and precious metals. Whoa, fancy. Cassie leaps out of your arms, pouncing on at, on the pet on the speck of light reflected from the large central gem on the ti on a tiara. Okay, when Cassie said something about um Yeah, this is something about don't trust the jealous boy. We already I think we know who the jealous boy is. Is it's not a secret though the, the, you know what I mean. Okay, um she swats at the light confused. You almost got it. Try again. A mysterious smile blooms on Catherine's face and she casually nudges one of the dress racks, get it setting the glittering garment swinging and sparkling. Puffed with, puffed up like an angry owl, Cassie zigzags across the boutique floor, attacking the moving dots. While you and Catherine dissolve into helpless laughter. Oh my gosh, she's so. That little fiend is going to sleep well tonight. You wander between the wrecks, the racks running, in the extinguished breading and silken fa fabrics through your fingers. Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, new problem. How am I supposed to choose? Everything here is so amazing. You stop in front of a gorgeous peacock costume, admiring the feathers that glitter like gems in the light. Okay, this I've got to try on. Can't wait to see you in it. You disappear into the dressing room, the costume slung over your arm. Mm hmm, I look good. A short while later, you step out of, out of the changing room and do a spin. Pretty decent, huh? Now I really, f now I now I really do feel part fay. You look you uh, look stunning, Anthony. I almost don't know what to say. Well, that's got well, that's well, that's got to be the be a first. I'll take it. Sometime there, you sweep into the grand ballroom. Sheer white curtains billow everywhere, brushing the polished floor. Stars dance across the ceiling as if it were the night sky itself. Can't believe this place. You spot your friends at one of the low tables and head toward them, weaving between dancing fake couples as they twirl across the floor. Nick sweeps an appreciative gaze gaze over over you, his eyes glowing with admiration. Beside him, Catherine runs up a runs a nail th over her lower lip. Wow, whoa, Ruck, going all out! I almost didn't recognize you. I, I did. The outfit could have been made for you. Aw, oh, guys, thanks. They're right. He looks stunning, Anthony. You, you do the. You do, you do. You're the most captivating creature here by far. You don't look so bad yourselves. A, a dazzling shimmer in the air above catches your eye, and you gasp as 
the as a crushing wave uh, made a million points of light rolls over your heads. Wow, what is that? Pixie Swarm, the fake equivalent of a light show. Beats the heck out of lasers. In my book. Breathless, you watch the cynically flotilla the whirl above you, mimicking falling stars and snowflakes. So beautiful, apparently. I guess you could say. Man, pixies always make everything better. Cassie suddenly jumps onto the table, her wide eyes fixated on the dancing swarm of pixies. No, you cannot eat them. Hey, I thought I told you to stay in the room. Oh my god, oh my god. Nice cat thing. She's yours? She is. Everyone, meet Cassie. Look at her, what a little darling. Oh. Casually, Cal holds out a finger. Cassie snips it wearily. Hey, little one. You're pretty darn. Cal yelps as Cassie lunges forward, sinking needle-like teeth into her, to his finger. As he lets go of Cal's finger and takes off, streaking across the, across the dance floor and vanishing beneath one of the billowing curtains. Now that's no way to treat my friends. Aw, uh, don't take it personal, personally, Cal. She probably just smelled the wolf, is all. An anticipatory murmur rises, and the Fae gather, gathered around you part, revealing Elric and Lady Talissa. Anthony, you look stunning, a true bird of paradise. Oh, my darling, you're extraordinary. Elric comes forward and gently grips you by the shoulders, beaming. Are you enjoying yourself? Is everything your, to your taste? This is all a little overwhelming. Everything's just so magical here. It's a lot to take in. Fear not, love. I'm sure you will grow accustomed to, to it in time. Is Tialo here? I haven't seen him. Nor I. For a wonder. He's, he usually lives and breathes for these balls. That may, that may have something to do with me. Actually, we had a bit of a run-in earlier. I think we're both hoping to avoid each other tonight. Elric and Lady Talisa exchange crane glares. That boy never learns. If he comported himself poorly. Please, I don't want to ruin this for any of us. Oh, you couldn't possibly. I believe your companions are eager for your company. We won't keep you from them. Come find us and come find us any time. Remember, you owe me a dance under the stars. Ah, um, you're my step um. The Lord the Lord and Lady incline their heads to you, they then sweep off you turn back to the crew, sighing a little. Hey, you okay? Yeah, I just wish Tialo and I could find common ground or something. I hate upsetting Elric and Lady Talissa. Chin up, Rook. It's that surely it's a surely kid turning things sour, not you. I know. I just thought we're all family. I just wish it felt that way with Tialo. Hey, I know just the thing to chew you up. One of the waiters mentioned a tasting bar. I was thinking we could try it out. Just you and me. Pretty much nothing holds a candle to exotic flake liquors. Not even snake tequila? I still don't understand what you see in that stuff. Even this, even call it nostalgia. Reminds me of a part, particular hairy job, involving a local wizard and an underground poaching ring. It's a long story, though a good drink or two might just loosen my tongue. Yeah, no. Ah. I'm good. Thanks, though.
Guess I'll be taking my snake tequila story to the grave. Just then, a slow, tender song strikes up. I know what will make this night even more magical. No. 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 Wow. I thought it was all white, but... Mm. I'm sorry, I think you boist a man. <laughs> you hold a hand out to Vera, she breaks into a sweet dimpled grin and steps into your arms. I was hoping I'd get to dance with the man of the evening. Oh stop. As the two of you twirl into a dance, she cocks her head, smiling. How do you feel about all this attention? Honestly a little out of place. Well, you don't look it. How do I look? Like a king. Vera's hand brushes down your cheek and across your lower lip. Your skin blooms with tingles under her touch. Am I a nice king or a dangerous one? Vera's eyes flash mysteriously. Her hand coils softly around the back of your neck as she leans in. And and stops as the music abruptly cuts off. What's going on? Things were about to get interesting. Jeez! Suddenly, all the lights wink out, plunging the hall into darkness. Um, is that supposed to happen? Most definitely not. Ethy, where are you? I'm over here, Nick. I. As you squint into the gloom, your eyes adjusting, you can't. You can make out the outlines of a hunched silhouette behind one of the curtains. What the heck? You pick your way carefully across the dance floor, half tripping over a discarded shoe, you yank back to the curtain, revealing... Tialo? Of course! I knew something was bad was going to happen. Just then a shriek tears through the hall, followed by a high-pitched panic voice. The wards! The wards are down! But that means... You wheel back toward Chialo, who lunges at you, a cruel curved dagger clutched in his hand. Will you fall prey to your brother's jealousy? Keep playing to find out. That was the quickest chapter ever! That was a quick chapter. That, it, sounds, it seems like it was quick. I don't know, but anyway, it feels quick. And I knew something was gonna happen. I knew that something bad was gonna happen. And that cat, that cat was uh, was right. <sighs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel. Go hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video. And also, Big Sky Country 2 is coming back on a Saturday. But I don't think I can do it on a Saturday, so I'm just going to do it on a Monday. But when it gets here, I'll explain. So, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.